Well hello, welcome to the Wild Gut Project, my name is Carrie and um, today's video is basically 12 tips that I wish I knew before starting the low FODMAP diet. So I know a lot of people have kind of put off the low FODMAP diet until after the new year, obviously Christmas is a bad time to try and do an elimination diet. So I was thinking a lot about kind of starting and in hindsight what I really wish someone had told me. Um, and I'm going to put that in a video for you now. Number one, before you actually start, start gathering and trying out recipes. So you've got like a solid, say, five recipes you can go to and cook whenever you want to eat. So I kind of tried out recipes as I was starting and it kind of meant when I felt my most deprived, I was also having some really crap meals because I didn't really know what I was doing with them. So before you completely jump in full low FODMAP, start trying out recipes. So good places to look for recipes, obviously if you're vegan you can check out this um, YouTube channel and my website, otherwise Pinterest is really really good for recipes, um, Instagram there's quite a few low FODMAP Instagrammers. So the book I found really helpful with lots of vegan low FODMAP recipes was the one by Jo Stepanaik, I've definitely said that wrong, um, but hers is vegan low FODMAP what to eat when you can't eat anything which is so true and I'll link that below because that obviously is a good place to start for vegan low FODMAP recipes. Number two is to start a food diary which I didn't do and this is going to sound really hard to believe but once you start feeling like healthy you genuinely forget how bad it is to feel bad and then you start to get a bit kind of cocky, you go out for dinner and you're like, you know what, I feel fine, I'm going to have something with garlic in because right now I don't care. And then, obviously, quickly you remember, oh yeah, no, feeling really sick is horrible when you don't sleep all night because you've got stomach cramps, like, how did I forget this? I think it's kind of like, on a really hot day, you, could, you just can't imagine ever feeling cold, it's that kind of you just forget what it feels like. So start a food diary, it will help you keep track and give you more information and it will also keep you motivated because you'll know where you're coming from and that it's, it's worth the effort. Number three is to go in with an open mind. I kind of went in thinking, for example, sweet potato was really bad for me, I thought that's something that triggered me um, and I thought that mango was something that could never do me harm and I was totally wrong. Sweet potatoes actually, turns out I can eat loads of and I'm all good but mangoes, like, tiny amount, bad idea. So, yeah, try and be a scientist of yourself. Be really sub subject, not subjective, objective. Be objective and try and let go of any, I don't know, what's the word? Assumptions. Try and let go of assumptions you might be holding on to and just be open minded. Four, and this is probably more true for vegans because obviously this is a vegan low FODMAP channel, is just don't expect to eat out very much. They're really, there's not an easy solution to it. You can go out for sushi but generally like low FODMAP isn't understood in most places. Vegan is not low FODMAP and together it's just... I wish I'd maybe made a point of saving all the money that I didn't spend eating out and then it would kind of maybe compensate for feeling left out. You can then treat yourself to something else, maybe more experiences or I don't know, yoga classes or something to compensate for the fact you're not going to be eating out for a while. Number five, find a short phrase that you're comfortable with in describing the low FODMAP diet. So people, obviously it's a really strange way of eating, it's not something people know about and I found it really useful just to have a quick short sentence of explaining it without having to kind of start talking about all my personal digestive problems or going into the like complicated ins and outs of all these different sugars and what foods you can and can't eat. Like if you can just say, for example, some foods contain different sugars which give me digestive problems so I'm just doing an elimination diet at the moment to work out what they are. And then most people go, oh okay cool, my friend has that. It's just, it's easier and it's less embarrassing if you just have a little short phrase that kind of makes everyone else understand and feel comfortable and you don't have to kind of stress about it. Six, um, I just wanted to put this one in for kind of completeness but definitely go for help with your doctor or dietitian if that's available to you and if you have any other medical conditions that need to be considered like absolutely get some professional medical help. Seven, don't worry. Take it from me because I've been doing it for a while, it gets way better. At the beginning I was just to be honest, I cried quite a bit because I was just distraught that all these foods that I absolutely loved, I couldn't eat anymore. I was just like, do I eat? It, like, you can actually have most of your favourite meals just kind of low FODMAPified, so 
It's just scary at the beginning. Please don't worry. Eight. Before you start, if you can, start getting in the habit of prepping snacks. Obviously it's a lot of work at the beginning if like with everything at once. So if you're already in the habit of chopping up some carrots the night before or sectioning off little bags of some nuts or seeds or little snacks you can have, it just makes it less stressful when you actually start the low format properly because you will have to have smaller meals so you will need to snack more. Nine, leading on from the snack prepping, you're going to want lots of boxes to put those snacks in. Also all the weighed out portions of food because obviously if you have only one third of the banana, there's two thirds you need to deal with, either give it to someone else or put it in a box for later. Um, same with, for example, cooking a bunch of rice or quinoa in one go, sectioning it out into different portion sizes. You just have to weigh it once and then you're done for a while anyway. So yeah, if you don't already, get some Tupperware. 10. Go for a big food shop and stock up on low FODMAP kind of carbohydrates, so kind of polenta, rice noodles, rice, gluten-free pastas, sourdough bread, just like fill up your kitchen with that so it's just there ready for meals. Also start stocking up on low FODMAP flavours. I kind of put a list in the meal maker guide that I'll link down below but kind of, I don't know, for example garlic infused olive oil is a lifesaver, miso paste I use all the time else. So it is possible to get low FODMAP stock cubes, so all of those are fine. If you don't live near somewhere that does tempeh, order some tempeh, just start bringing in all the resources you'll need um, before you start so there is actually lots of food to eat. Number 11! So this one is like a huge learning curve when you start, but just I wish before then I started reading packaging. Like just get in the habit of checking labels. If you're vegan you're probably already doing this, but you just need to get that into your routine or like just your instinct to read the packaging oh no there's celery salt in there, oh there's garlic, there's onion um, and just yeah become aware start growing that list in your head of things that you can and can't eat 12 so this one I kind of I learnt the hard way so I got caught out a few times feeling very hungry but if there's someone in your life and you go to their home a lot it might be your parents, a best friend, a partner See if you can store some food around their house. So, for example, at my boyfriend's, I always have some gluten-free pasta, some oat cakes, um, and some peanut butter, and I think I have yeah some rice noodles and miso paste. Oh, and some like peppermint tea bags, because generally it means if I'm ever cooking around his, I know he's Italian, might be having pasta, then. I've got my gluten-free pasta and it's ready to go. And before I did that, there'd be times when I'd be around and I'd be like, yeah, I want to cook dinner with you, but I can't eat any of this. Yeah. So if you know you're going to be somewhere a lot, just make sure you have your own little store cupboard and they'll appreciate the fact that then you'll be able to eat with them and it makes your life so much easier and a lot less hungry. That also transfers to your place of work. So if you have a desk or a drawer or space in the communal kitchen, just have a little area of low FODMAP foods you can turn to if you haven't been prepared with a packed lunch or snacks. So those are 12 tips that I wish someone had told me before I started. If you've um, been doing this for a while, I'd love to know if there's any kind of insights or tips you wish you had been told. So please kind of like, comment and definitely subscribe if you want more videos. I post one every Sunday evening. Um, for low FODMAP and vegan IBS tips and recipes. Otherwise, best of luck if you're just starting the low FODMAP diet and also happy 2018! Bye!